Hey everybody, this is Dave Dugdale, learningdslrvideo.com. Thank you so much for purchasing this course. You are going to learn a ton over the next several hours. We're gonna talk about picture styles, white balance, why it's so important to nail exposure, a lot of things to, uh, to get you up to speed quickly. All right, this is a beginner level course. Um, this course is perfect for somebody that just picked up the Canon 6D and you've never shot video with it before. Or perhaps you know, you've you tried and you weren't very successful at it. Or perhaps you've been shooting stills with this camera or you owned a Rebel line of camera before it and you've never tried video. So this course is perfect for you. You know, I love these cameras. Um, one of the reasons I love these cameras so much is I love taking stills with them, but I also love taking a uh, video with them because they both shoot awesome video and awesome stills. And this is just a wonderful full frame camera. You've bought an amazing camera. So over the next several hours, we're gonna be covering just about everything in the mail as it pertains to video. We're gonna to touch on some stills related items, but it's mostly pertains to video because there's gonna be a little bit of crossover we're gonna to need to talk about. One of the things I wanna talk about really quick is the things we're not gonna be covering in detail in this course. I'm gonna be talking about some items, for instance, like this viewfinder and um, why you use it. I'm not gonna be covering it um, in, in such a depth of how you use it. Um, for instance, like an ND filter. I mean, we're gonna be talking about it, but I'm not gonna be really um, teaching you how to use an ND filter. So it doesn't really involve accessories. For instance, like a glide cam. Um, a glide cam course is like a course unto itself. I mean, it's, you could, it's not a four hour course, it's probably an eight hour course, just how to use the glide cam. So I'll touch upon those things, but um, those are the things I'm not gonna really be covering is uh, accessories that didn't come with the camera. All right, next up, we're gonna show you what's in the box. Um, again, this is Canon 6D. It doesn't go by any other names, uh, which is fortunate because the Rebel line has two different, depending on what part of the, uh, the world you're in. Um, so it's just nice, it just has one name. And I got this one with the, the kit lens, which is uh, very possible. You might've gotten the body only, or you might've gotten the kit. In this case, I got the kit with 24-105. Uh, EF lens. All right, first up in the box is your manuals. Um, there's three different manuals and then there's two sets in different languages. For English language, um, you've got your pocket guide uh, and this one is for the Wi-Fi and GPS and then this is the pretty much the full manual. Uh, definitely hold on to these. Um, again, we're going to be covering everything in those manuals except for stills related items. Next up, we have your discs. It comes with three different discs. Um, to be honest, uh, I don't use this one and this one. Um, there are some on this one, which is the EOS uh, software, the EOS utility, that I really like. If you don't use things like, um, or you don't own Lightroom, there are some other pieces of software on here that you can use. Um, and it's got some other things like you can stitch photos together, it's the stuff that I don't do on a, on a photography side. But one of the items, and we'll be demonstrating this later, is the EOS uh, utility software. So definitely hold on to these discs because I've heard some people complain like, where do I find them online? So don't just like throw it out and lose it. All right, next up is the uh, digital interface cable, also known as just a regular USB cable. It plugs into your um, AV port on the camera. Um, and this would plug into your computer and it can plug into other things as well on this side to perhaps a follow focus. There's other accessories you can buy. I use this cable a lot. Um, Definitely don't lose it. And you can also, in my case, I, I use extenders. It's where you can extend it out like another 15 feet and it works just fine. So definitely hold on to that cable. All right, next up is the stereo AV cable. Um, I've left it in, I've left this in the bag because I know I'm not gonna open it. I'm never gonna use it. The reason I'm not gonna ever use this is because one of the reasons you bought this camera to shoot you know, HD video, high quality video. Well, this cable pretty much interfaces with old TV sets. So you can basically come out kind of a standard def from the camera to an older TV set. Um, hopefully, you know, it's really, um, I wish they would change this, but they haven't. They should be not shipping it with this cable. They should be giving you an HDMI cable. Unfortunately, I don't know if it maybe it's too expensive or what, but one, maybe one of these days, the Canon will actually ship the proper cable. So to be honest, I never carry this and I never use it. All right, next up is your camera strap. Um, even says 60 on it. Um, you know, I've left this in the packaging because I know I'm not gonna use it. One of the reasons, I don't wanna be advertising that I have a 60, which is a very expensive camera. And it says, hey, come steal me. Um, that's one of the reasons. Um, to be honest, I never use it because um, I use what's called the Black Rapid R strap. Um, so basically, the reason I like this one better is 
can basically put it around your shoulder like this and then with the camera on it, and of course I don't have a lens on it yet, but uh, basically what's nice is instead of having it around your neck this way or over your shoulder, um, you just bring the camera up and you're ready to shoot with, with it like this. Um, and it's also a nice, um, it's also nice because it gives you a point of contact to keep your nice steady shot, which a neck strap will do as well, but it, it uh, balances off of your waist and you can kind of put it off on the, the side of your waist and it's just much easier to cam carry your camera. Um, so I definitely recommend it. Um, it's also listed on my gear page if you're interested. And it just um, untwists just like that. It's pretty easy. All right, next up is your battery charger and your battery. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory, but there are a few things I wanna cover here. Um, battery charger, which is really nice, is you just flip this out, obviously, and put it in the wall. What's nice about this one compared to the uh, Rebel line is it doesn't have a cord so it packs up nice and neat. Um, you just take this protective cover off, slip it in, um, start charging it up. I'm sure you've gotten this already. If it uh, flashes amber uh, once, that means it's between like zero and 50, and then you know flashes twice, you're between 50 and 75, and three times you're between 75 and full pretty much for the most part, and then when it turns green, you're at 100. Now, one of the things about these um, batteries is you can, um, keep recharging them. Um, even if they're not fully charged, you don't have to let them go all the way to dead to recharge them. Um, can even recommend like you're, if you got a shoot in the morning, um, just, you know, even if it's like at 70% charge or 80% charge, slip it back in there, get it um, all the way up as high as you can. I think it says in the manual, once it gets past like 90, 94%, it won't charge anymore. Um, but it just, just keep charging. You know, I've had some of these batteries from my older cameras for three years ago and they work quite well even three years later. Um, buying aftermarket batteries, you can definitely do that. Um, I will warn you that Canon rec says that, you know, it might uh, be dangerous to your camera. I've never had that happen or heard of anybody having that happen to them. But one of the things about the, they have a little chip inside the battery that interfaces with the, with the camera. And one of the things is it, it gives you an accurate representation of how much battery life you have. Some of the other ones don't have that chip in it and therefore you have no indication when it's about to die. Um, real quick, uh, this is pretty much meant for um, protecting it when you have in your pocket against lint. And one of the things you'll notice is um, if you do get lint and some dirt inside there and you put it in the camera and the camera doesn't boot up, um, it could be a good chance that, uh, or it doesn't boot up all the way or does something really funky. I've had this happen before. You want to blow out the contacts or clean it with an eraser. Um, it will definitely, and then slip it in and it'll definitely improve. Uh, also another use for the cover, which I never really do it this way, but, um, so if you put it on this way and there's a little battery, uh, symbol in there, um, that could mean however you want it to mean. But, um, I think the way that the manual says this could be, like it's dead and when it's fully charged, you put it this way and it's blue and you're good to go. All right, next up is the lens. Um, this is the 24 to 105 lens. Uh, just, it's an excellent lens. Um, we'll take the lens hot hood off of here. Um, we'll notice it's got this red band around it and that indicates it's an L series lens, which is their highest end lenses that they pretty much sell. Um, very nice lens. One of the things, we're gonna be talking more about lenses later, but one of the things I want to talk about really quickly is it has image stabilization, which is awesome for video. And we're going to be demonstrating this a lot later. Um, here's where your autofocus and manual focus control is. Um, this is your focus and this is your zoom. Um, we're going to, again, we're going to be talking more about this later. But for the most part, what I tell you is if you're coming from like a Rebel line of camera and you've got a lens like this, which is a very popular starter lens, it's the 18 to 55 and it's EFS lens. Just one of the things I want to tell you is that this particular lens will not fit on your full frame camera. Um, only EF lenses will fit on your camera. So again, we'll be covering more about that later. I have a feeling that you guys probably already own a lens or you bought the kit package, but if you haven't and you just have the body and you have no idea where to start, a great place to start is a Fast 50, a 50 millimeter prime. Um, you can get the 1.8, which is very inexpensive, like a hundred bucks. You can get the 1.4, which is around $350. Um, great place to start. Um, that's where I started. I would definitely recommend just buy that lens, just use it for about a month. 
um, get used to it, how it looks and feels before you step into a zoom. Um, this is also, it's a great zoom, the 24 to 105, but if you haven't owned a lens yet, um, I would recommend starting with a 50. All right, and last but not least is the actual camera. Um, this is the camera body, obviously. So a few precautions before we start using this camera is there's a couple of things you need to know. It's not totally waterproof. You can't just dunk it in the water. Um, this, however, is more waterproof than say something like the Rebel line of cameras, which have pretty much no protection. But like up here, along here, the windows, the buttons all have seals on them. Um, and as you step up into the higher end cameras, like the, the 1D series, um, they even have more protection. Or the, the 5D Mark III has a little bit more protection than this one. At least that's what I was just at NEB and that's what the, the Canon um, person told me behind the counter. Um, and a couple other things is um, in terms of heat, um, you can, you don't want to be leaving this in your car and your car is getting up to 130 degrees out in the sun um, because it can break down the lubricants because um, this has mechanical shutter in it. Um, it flaps back and forth. You don't want that um, stuff that's in the camera, the oils and the, the grease to degrade with the real high temperatures. So they recommend that you, you know, if you're going to shoot, you know, try to, you know, I know there's some people actually will put their camera like in a cooler um, over ice, uh, not in the ice, obviously, but um, just to keep it cooler if you're going to leave it in your car kind of thing, just if you want it to last a really long time. Basically, a rule of thumb in terms of like uh, foul weather is if you can't stand it being out in the rain, your camera probably can't. So if it's like an utter downpour, yeah, the camera's not going to do well. I have on my Canon 5D Mark III, I've had it out in, you know, light mist, doing time lapses and stuff like that. Never had a problem. Um, I wouldn't do that with my Rebel line of cameras, but uh, the 6D has, should be about as good as the 5D Mark III in terms of weather protection. So if it's a light drizzle or something like that, you're probably fine. Um, again, we're going to be covering all the buttons and switches and knobs and stuff like that. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the lens onto the body. So basically it's really easy. You just take the lens cap off. Um, one of the things you want to, don't want to do is to tilt your camera up like this, especially when the lens or the, the mirror, which we're going to get into later, is up and dust is falling down onto your sensor, which is not a good thing. So it's always good when you're changing lenses to not tip it up. You usually want to tip it down when you're changing lenses. Um, so we're just going to take the lens cap off of here and put it, you want to take this red dot and line it up with the red dot right there and rotate until it clicks. To release it, you basically push in with your thumb here and rotate and pull out. Um, pretty self-explanatory. One of the things you'll notice is like on an EFS lens, they have white squares. Um, you'll notice we don't have a white square here like on the Rebel line of cameras, um, indicating that you can't put an EFS lens on here like I said before. So I just wanted to reiterate that if you have an EFS lens that you're taking from uh, you know, one of your crop sensor cameras, it's not going to work on this full frame camera. All right, next up, we need one more thing before we can shoot video, and that's our memory card. Um, in this case, it's an SD card. It's the only thing that the 6D takes. Um, so just open up the door. There's only one way to put it in. We're going to cover more about cards later. Um, it's keyed, so you can only put it in one way. Um, one of the things you want to do with the SD cards is don't put them close to magnets like a speaker, like rest them on a speaker. Um, you can get corrupted data on it and stuff like that. So pretty much now we've got the lens on, we've got the card in. Um, the last thing we need to do is put the battery in. Real, this is pretty self-explanatory, but basically you just open up, um, it has a little arrow, uh, just put it in and close the door. Um, I, the battery only takes maybe two and a half hours uh, to charge, usually around two uh, from a fully dead state. It depends on your temperature. I mean, if you're doing a very cold, let's say it's 30 degrees outside and you've plugged it in outside somewhere, it's going to take a long time to charge. All right. The way the camera comes, um, right out of the box, they'll usually put it on the green easy mode and you'll be in stills mode. So let's go ahead and turn the camera on for the very first time. And what we'll see is we're going to see a date and time. First thing it's like set your date. So in our case, let's go ahead and set the date. So I press the center button set. And then I take the up and down arrow key and I say, well, 
it's uh, April, and then when you're done, you hit the set key again, and then you rotate to the right. Now, I have a feeling a lot of you guys have already done this, and today is the 12th. But it is important to do this, and uh, it's always important to keep it up to date as well, because I can't tell you how many times I've gone like to a different uh, time zone, and uh, it's, you know, you want to, especially if you're running two cameras at the same time, you want to sync them up in terms of the time. Um, it makes it so much easier. Then we go down to our time zone. Um, for me, I'll turn on daylight savings time. And for me, I am not in London. We'll go down to and find Denver. There we go. So we have a blank screen. So in the automatic mode, the green mode that it comes in, um, if you hit the info button several times, you'll step through. And this is in the scene intelligent auto, which I never use. Um, and again, we're not going to be covering stills here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and rotate this to the M mode, which is fully manual. And we get this little nag screen, which I'm going to show you how to get rid of. Um, and this is what you'll normally see um, with all this information. And then I'm going to skip over to live view by rotating this this way or movie mode. And then we've got the actual image on the screen. And if we hit the info button, we can toggle through. And we're going to be covering all this stuff later. But basically what I'm going to do really quick, is I'm going to take this dial up here, and we'll talk about it more later. I'm going to go down to a 50th of a second. Now, if your camera is coming from Europe, it's probably going to be set to a 60th. And we'll get that later. Don't worry about it too much. Um, I'm just going to quickly... Uh, Actually, my meter is right on, and that's probably because this is in the auto mode, which is okay for right now. And then just to, to record, so we've set the shutter speed. The f-stops 5.6. I guess that's the way it comes. The ISO is at, actually it says auto. It was at 100. It just went to auto. And we're going to, again, we're going to get all this stuff later, but just hit the record button. Record a few seconds. Hit the record button again. Go down here over to the blue play button, hit play, and then hit the set button once and set button twice, and then it'll play back for you. So again, this is just a really quick start guide. What I want you to do here is actually run it in full auto, um, which is totally fine for now. We're not going to be recording like that later, but I want you to get a feel for what auto feels like and just get out there and make mistakes. I know a lot of people are going to consume this course in many different ways. Some are going to just blast through it and watch all of the, all the four hours of it all in one sitting. Well, some people might actually just watch one chapter, try something and move on to the next. So if you're one of those people that want to try something, go ahead and try full auto and just take it around your house and just shoot stuff with auto on in video mode just to get a feel for what that's like. All right. That's it for this first chapter.